A new study shows that very low carbohydrate diets can help with visceral adipose tissue and body fat loss, and even improve exercise capacity. Adding high intensity interval training didn't add a whole lot to the effects of low carb diets. So what can we learn from this study? Well, we can learn a lot about how trial design can affect results and about how we have to be cautious in how we interpret certain factors. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And I think this is a really interesting study because it's gotten a little bit of pushback on, on social media, at least that I've seen, um, that maybe the conclusions um, that some people are reaching aren't supported by the data. But here's the thing. It's a good study. It's a randomized control trial that we can definitely learn some things from. But we have to be careful about what we learn from it. So I want to get into the details because, one, it's interesting what we can learn from it. And, two, I think it's interesting to see how we have to approach some randomized controlled trials. So let's get into it. The study is called Effects of a Very Low Carbohydrate, High Fat Diet, and High Intensity Interval Training on Visceral Fat Deposition and Cardiorespiratory Fitness in Overfat Individuals, a Randomized Controlled Trial. And it was published in Frontiers of Nutrition, uh, December 21st, 2021. Now, Phil Maffetone is one of the co-authors, and we had him on a, an exercise podcast along with Martin Gabala um, talking about aerobic training and high intensity interval training. So that might be interested to go back and listen to um, if you're interested in this topic. But let's talk about the study briefly. So there were 91 individuals um, and they had to be between 20 and 59 years old and they had to be overweight or obese with no experience with low carb or high intensity interval training. So pretty, pretty good selected group that they didn't have experience with low carb or high intensity interval training. Then there were uh, grouped into four different groups. So high intensity interval training alone, a very low carb, high fat diet alone, or a combination of the low carb and high intensity interval training together, or a control group with no intervention. They were followed for 12 weeks. So some of the details here, because these are important, the high intensity interval training was walking. It was high intensity walking on a treadmill, three sessions per week, gradually increasing the number of intervals, three minute intervals of high intensity walking over the course of the 12 weeks. Now the diet was really interesting because they clearly said the target protein that was recommended was 1.5 grams per kilo per day. But then when you look at what people actually reported eating in the results um, section, they were between 67 grams of protein per day and 74 grams of protein per day. Now that's a low protein diet. And if you I mean, if that was 1.5 grams per kilo, then these people would have to have weighed 45 or 50 kilos, which was not the case since it was a study in overweight and obese people. So this was definitely on the low side of protein intake, which is really interesting because they recommended a good amount of protein. 1.5 grams per kilo is a really good amount of protein, but they ate much less, which can show some sometimes the difficulty in people getting adequate amounts of protein when not really specifically guided to do so. Um, so that's one big take home we'll come back to. Now, the carb level was pretty dramatic, 34 grams of carbs in the very low carb diet versus 160 for, for the non-low carb. But that is still interesting. 160 is still much lower than the standard American diet. So it still was sort of relatively low carb-ish compared to the, uh, low, the standard American diet. But definitely a good job, uh, the very low carb group getting down to 34. And also interesting, the overall energy that people ate, the overall calories that people eat was lower in the very low carb group. They were not told to count calories. They were not told to reduce calories. It just naturally happens in low carb eating that you tend to decrease your, your calories. A number of studies have shown it and this study showed it as well. So that's very interesting. Um, okay, so what did they find? Well, the, the, the main finding was the visceral adipose tissue. So the, you know, the, the fat that you carry inside your body in your organs, which is probably the most concerning um, body fat that you can have in terms of its risk for other health conditions. That decreased in the low carb group. It also decreased in the low carb plus HIT group, but the HIT didn't really um, contribute a whole lot to it. It looked like it clearly was the low carb group alone. The control, it didn't change, and the HIT group alone, it didn't change. So it was the low carb dieting that reduced the visceral adipose. Now, body fat also decreased in visceral adipose, um, as did lean mass, and that's going to be important. But we're going to get to that. But weight loss by itself happened only in the low carb groups, not in the HIT group by itself and not in the control group, only in the low carb and the low carb plus HIT. So it makes sense then that, that any weight changes that we're going to see are going to happen in the low carb group, meaning body fat and lean mass. 
Now, lean mass is interesting because that would be the concerning part, right? If you're losing muscle mass, that's a concern. But first, what is lean mass? So on a DEXA scan, lean mass is basically bone, muscle, and water. Now, when you go on a very low carb diet, you lose a lot of water. You're losing glycogen and water. So a lot of that initial weight loss is water weight. And the lean mass was found, the mean last, sorry, lean mass loss, that's hard to say, lean mass loss was found mostly in the, in the beginning, the first few weeks, which could be consistent with water. But here's the other thing, you know, and this is part of the, the problem with the interpretation that you could say very low carb keto diets cause you to lose muscle mass. Well, that's not what this study showed. It showed it, you lost lean mass when you're also losing body weight. So could it be water? Sure, sure it could. But what else is, was going on? Low protein diet, right? Low protein diet and no resistance training. Those are the things we know are most important for maintaining muscle mass. So if you have a concern about losing muscle mass on, on a low carb diet, just make sure it's a low carb, adequate to high protein, and doing some resistance training. And that's what you need to do to preserve or even build muscle mass. So on the one hand, it certainly could be water since it was mostly in the beginning, but on the other hand, it's not the optimal diet for lean mass. So that's not what they were testing, right? You can't fault the, the investigators for that. That wasn't their intention to test it. If you wanted to test it, you test two different types of protein diets, resistance training versus the high intensity interval training. That's the study for that. So I don't fault them in any way for not testing it because it wasn't what they were looking at. But, but that's what I think is part of the danger in concluding too much that low carb diets cause lean muscle mass loss. No, they could lose some water for sure. And we have to pay attention to protein and your exercise. Now, a couple other interesting findings was um, exercise capacity Im improved in the high intensity interval training group, but also improved in the low carb group alone without the exercise. So that was a little surprising to me. I'm, I'm got to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how to explain that, um, where there was no change in the control group. Um, but the high intensity interval training group did improve exercise performance. So it makes sense. Um, also, the beta hydroxybutyrate levels, the BHB levels in the group that was low carb was more erratic in the group that was low carb with the interval training. So that's interesting too about, you know, maybe not getting too excited about how you interpret your, your beta hydroxybutyrate levels when you're doing uh, a good amount of exercise because it will be uh, variable and fluctuate according to your exercise. So that's a good practical take home from this. So what's the overall conclusions? Low carb diets help you reduce your calories naturally, help you lose weight, help you lose body fat and that you're also gonna lose water weight. And my in conclusions that I would throw in there is you have to pay attention to protein and resistance training if you wanna maintain and build uh, lean muscle mass. But there's nothing here to say specifically that low carb diets cause loss of muscle mass. The other take homes, um, walking high intensity interval training, um, can improve cardiorespiratory fitness. But interesting that this level of high intensity interval training did not um, add anything more to visceral adipose loss, body fat tissue loss, or uh, lean muscle building um, to the low carb diet. So we have to understand that this was a walking trial. What, there was no resistance training um, and it was a walking high intensity interval training. So for what they were studying, it seemed like it was a good study with interesting results. We can't blame them for not studying everything under the sun because it was a randomized control trial. Anyway, so that was a little bit of a mix of how to interpret randomized control trials, plus some interesting findings on a, on a low carb diet study. Hope this was helpful. Um, if it was, click the thumbs up and subscribe button. And if you want more information, go to dietdoctor.com. We have so much information there about um, getting adequate protein, about resistance training, about body composition, um, about body fat loss. We have guides on all of those subjects that goes into much greater detail, synthesizing all the studies. We're going to add this study um, to those references because I think this does contribute nicely. But then we'll pull in all, we pull in the studies from all the other fields, um, which really help give a, a more rounded and comprehensive uh, view of the topic. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you next time here on the Diet Doctor News on YouTube.